Hi there, I'm Danny Flexen. Welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. We're here every Monday at 4.30pm to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. And an incredible fight took place on Saturday night. Um, watched it on The Zone, which is still available at just one ninety nine a month in the UK. I'm not sure how long that will last. Probably, if I'm being cynical, till just before Canelo against Billy Joe Saunders on May the 8th. But let's hope it goes through there as well. We get to watch that for just one ninety nine, as well as all the rest of the content they offer. But enough of shilling for the zone, even though they're not paying me to do so. Let's talk about the great fight. Saturday night rematch. Eight years in the making between Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez and one Francisco Estrada for two of the major super flyweight world titles. Um, I thought it was an excellent fight before we talk about the result. Um, just thought both men put in not just an incredible effort, but technically, tactically, very, very intelligent. Both made adjustments. Mid-fight had to adapt to each other's styles. I know it was a rematch, but obviously it was a long time ago, um, the first fight between them way back in 2012. So they had to adjust to what each other was doing as the fight progressed. And it, I can't even say it ebbed and flowed because the pace certainly was consistent throughout. Um, they seemed to tire towards the kind of, I guess, the championship rounds, round 10, 11, 12. But even then, the effort that Gonzalez particularly put forth in the final round, the 12th round, was was just uh, memorable, to say the least. Um, now, I've seen a lot of people calling the uh, victory for Estrada um, a robbery, which is already uh, one of the more overused terms in the boxing lexicon. And I'm not entirely convinced that it was a robbery. I watched it. I didn't watch it live. I watched it the, uh, I'll say the next morning. It was probably about three hours after it actually took place. Um, when I actually woke up, I watched it on the zone um, without the commentary, um, no sound. And just kind of scored it round by round um, in my head as I was going through. I had it a draw at the end, um, 114, 114, six rounds apiece. And I do kind of challenge myself to try at least to find a winner in each round. If I really can't split them, then I'll go with an even round. But I try and avoid them wherever possible. Um, and I felt it was a difficult fight to score. I didn't think there were that many clear rounds to either man. I thought the majority of the rounds were competitive and tight. And often it depends what type of work you prefer. And what I also thought was very difficult for people watching at home and for the three judges involved is just how quickly both guys moved. Not just their hand speed, but their footwork as well. And it's hard to see who lands more shots, which shots are blocked, which shots are ridden, the weight of the shots. You know, um, also the, the little nuances, the way they get into position, effective aggression versus ineffective aggression. When a fight's being fought between two smaller guys, super flyweights at an incredibly fast pace, a lot of that becomes more difficult and you're talking more shades of grey than, than black and white who won each round. Um, I also thought there was a, a difference between what you liked as well. I thought Gonzalez um, had the greater work rate and was very, very successful in the pocket. But I thought Estrada on the kind of rare occasions when he was able to get a bit of space was pretty good at range. You know, he is the ranger operator, the bigger guy, I think, naturally. Um, and some of his body shots were particularly good. Caused um, Gonzalez to slow down a little bit in the middle rounds. And his accuracy, his shot selection at times was superb, I thought. Um, whereas Gonzalez showed a lot of flair, um, particularly at close quarters. Dipped well, uh, moved well from head to body um, when he was throwing his combinations. So a lot to enjoy it. And I really didn't think it was a robbery. I had it a draw. I would have had no quarrel with a, a close decision either way. I know um, Judge Carlos Sucre has been suspended by the WBA for having a 117-111 score in favour of Estrada, which, yes, I find very hard to see because I thought it was a very close fight. Although, if you say the majority of rounds were close, a wide scorecard isn't that hard um, to predict, really. Because if you say, I don't know, uh, eight of the 12 rounds were close, if you gave all of those close rounds to one person, then you get a tight score, uh, a wide scorecard, sorry. So, I think we're often moved to call when the guy we think's one doesn't win, and the majority of people, particularly on social media, um, agree with us, can be a bit of an echo chamber, of course, on the likes of Twitter and Instagram and so on, we're quick to claim it as a robbery or a, a large-scale injustice, but that's not always the case. You know, just because 
you and your 10 friends think that Estrada um, lost, you may have only had him losing by two points. And if and, and you may all have had him only losing by a narrow margin. And if that's the case, then seeing it to him by a point or two points isn't a robbery. The 117-111 score exacerbates the problem, makes people think, wow, you know, uh, Gonzalez has really been done over there. And he has by that score, but that doesn't mean he necessarily deserved to win the fight beyond all doubt. Um, so I didn't like it, particularly by the more respected names and people in the media calling it a robbery. Oh, Gonzalez won that fight, exclamation mark, and, and all that sort of stuff. I thought, you know, you could give it to Gonzalez, you could give it to Estrada. I scored it a draw. I had no major problem with a close decision either way. I guess the main thing is I'd like to see them do it again. Um, we don't want to wait another eight years for the trilogy fight. Um, Gonzalez obviously clearly won the first one. But then you've got um, Risaket saw Rungvisai. I probably said that wrong, but I gave it a go. Um, waiting in the background. He won over the weekend as well. He's obviously um, knocked out Gonzalez and beaten uh, Estrada in their first fight and uh, lost to Estrada in the rematch. Beat Gonzalez contentiously in their first fight on points. And he'll be waiting in the wings for a shot at Estrada, who's now got two uh, of the belts at Super Flyweight, 118 pounds. But I'd like to see them go at it again. And and But then these are two guys that are so good and so well matched, they could fight another 10 times and it'd still be really close every time. So I think if, we, what, what, if, if what we're looking for is a conclusive victor, then we may never find one. It may be a a mission impossible, unfortunately. But I'd watch them another 10 times anyway, just because the action was so good. And not just because they're knocking lumps out of each other um, for 12 rounds. There's plenty of art and science involved. You know, the the little moves they do, the little slips and rolls to set up their shots, the way they pivot um, around each other to set up their um, next punch in a combination. And just so so intelligent and the fact that they're doing it and I mentioned earlier how hard it is to score because they're fighting at such a higher pace but the fact that they're managing to see the openings capitalize on them and and stay for the most part defensively responsible while the action's moving at that pace just shows how quickly not just their feet and hands are moving but their brains their brains are moving incredibly quickly to keep up with their bodies and to react to their opponent's actions as well it's, it's amazing and it sounds like, I know I'm talking like someone who's only just discovered boxing as a sport or particularly in the lighter weight classes, but even though I've been involved in boxing for probably 15 years now, risk of ageing myself, I think my hair's doing that enough on its own, um, I'm still dazzled by what these guys are capable of. It's like a, you know, a high power computer going on inside their heads that can move and adapt, not just mid-fight but mid-round, even mid-combination. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And if you haven't had a chance to watch the fight yet, it's obviously on the zone, particularly in the UK. It's still incredibly cheap. Get on it. You can see the full uh, full night's replay. I think they'll just have the fights on their own as well. Definitely worth watching. Um, also on the bill, we saw Jessica McCaskill uh, retain her world welterweight titles, undisputed welterweight titles against Cecilia Bracus. Um, she repeated her victory, probably a bit clearer um, decision this time around. Uh, just a bit too much, the work rate, determination, tenacity. Bracus um, still going to carry on with her career, which is great. We'll see what she does. But I think for McCaskill, she will now be well in the sights for another rematch, this time with someone who has beaten her in Katie Taylor, um, who's a two-weight world champion. And we'll see a former victim of hers now reigning as an undisputed world champion at Welter. I don't think Taylor would be considering a move up to Welter against many opponents, um, given that she's not the biggest lightweight and certainly didn't look massive when she went up to light well to beat Christine uh, Linodatu for that belt. But I think against someone she's beaten in the past and will fancy herself to beat again, she'll see a golden opportunity to become Ireland's first ever freeweight world champion um, of either gender. She'll get to pip. Um, well, she won't get to pip necessarily because Carl Frampton's obviously going for that honour against Jamel Herring um, before Casey Taylor's, uh, well, certainly before Jessica McCaskill's next fight. So she won't get to pip Carl Frampton if he wins. But if he doesn't win, then she could become the first um, and pip, you know, the likes of Frampton and Michael Conlon, of course, who both like to, um, Conlon hasn't won a world title yet, I know, but his uh, long stated ambition is to win world titles at least three different weights. But I'm going off on a bit of a tangent. The point is, Katie Taylor will see a sensible route to achieving that goal. 
and to moving up to welterweight with the least possible risk. There's still a big risk involved and McCaskill's undoubtedly improved since he lost to Taylor a number of years ago. But it's another option for Taylor um, amongst many, I'm sure she has at the moment. So uh, good show overall. Incredible main event. Definitely watch it if you haven't already. And in terms of comments, please let me know below who you thought won the fight. If you scored it round by round, what your score was. And even if you scored it to uh, Gonzalez, let me know if you would consider the result that came out a robbery or whether you just see it as going, you know, the opposite of how you scored it. Do you think it was a big enough change or disparity to be classed as a robbery? Let me know um, and I will uh, respond to some of the comments. I'll be back on uh, Thursday for Flexpectations, 4.30pm, to look ahead to the boxing action of this coming weekend, which includes Lawrence Okoli bidding for the vacant WBO Cruiserweight title on Matchroom's card. Um, Virgil Ortiz against Maurice Hooker is another one. Um, and there's a big show on Friday where Lee McGregor goes for the European Bantamweight title against Cream Guerfi as well. Lots of action this weekend. Um, and I'll be back for the next Reflections, looking back at all that action uh, next Monday at 4.30 as well. Really appreciate the time as always, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Cheers.